to deliver the best vision experience possible, a good measurement on the iProfiler Plus is critical. This video will describe techniques that will enable you to assess the quality of a measurement and deliver accurate information every time. The iProfiler Plus should be used in a dimly lit room with no direct light sources in order to emulate mesopic conditions. Ideally, the iProfiler Plus should be the first measurement device used on the patient. No wetting drops should be used, and the patient should not be dilated prior to measurement. Enter the patient's last and first name, gender, and birth date if required. Required fields will be noted with an asterisk. This could be configured in the settings menu. We're going to take a measurement on the iProfiler Plus by Zeiss giving the doctor new information they haven't had before. Adjust the table so that the chin rest is just below the patient's chin when looking straight ahead. Make sure the head is fully up against the headrest throughout the measurement. When we start the measurement, you will see a hot air balloon. Throughout the measurement, just keep looking at the stripes in the balloon and blink if you need to. Check to see that the patient's head rests comfortably without straining to reach the head or chin rest. Head should be straight, not tilted to either side, and shoulders square with the device. Hands should be resting on either side of the device or on the patient's legs. Next, adjust the chin rest so the patient's pupil is aligned vertically. This can be done using the mark on the faceplate or by using the chin rest controls on the iProfiler Plus screen. There are several configuration options available for the measurement. You can choose to run just a wavefront measurement or just a topography measurement. We recommend running wavefront only if you are auto-refracting over contact lenses. You can choose to measure just one eye. You can also adjust the pupil distance of your patient, which makes it easier for the machine to locate the pupil when switching between eyes. There is also the option to measure a patient in turn head mode. Use this if the topography measurement included shadows from the nose or brow bone. Start the measuring process by pressing Measure. Be sure to coach the patient throughout the entire measurement. We will begin the measurement now. It will automatically move from one eye to the other and will be over in about a minute. Blink a few times and look at the stripes in the balloon. Keep looking at the stripes. The balloon will go in and out of focus, which is normal. Just continue looking at the stripes in the balloon and ignore anything else. Feel free to blink if you need to. Just keep your eyes open nice and wide in between blinks. The instrument will now measure your other eye. Blink a few times and look again at the stripes of the balloon. Keep looking at the stripes as the balloon goes in and out of focus. Again, remember that is normal. Just continue looking at the stripes in the balloon and ignore anything else. Blink if you need to. Just keep your eyes open nice and wide. Great, you can relax now. The measurement is complete. Stay seated as I review the quality of the measurement. Some key aspects to look for when reviewing the quality of the measurement. The ring should be clearly defined, in focus, and complete within the pupil aperture. Zoom in on the image if you need to. The difference in pupil sizes should be less than one millimeter. There should be good mesh coverage with no clusters of missing data points. A few missing individual points is acceptable. Zoom in on the image if you need to. Touch Save. If the topography measurement had incomplete rings within the pupil aperture due to shadows from the nose or brow bone, take the measurement again in turn head mode. It's a good idea to compare the auto refraction measurement with the patient's existing prescription if available. If the sphere power is significantly more negative than their existing prescription, the patient may have accommodated during measurement and the procedure should be repeated, telling the patient specifically to ignore the red dot. You can now print the auto-refraction results on the thermal printer in the device. You also have the option to save a report for any of the views in the review screen. 
if you had a patient where the mesh overlay was incomplete after measuring multiple times and the missing data was in the same location on the eye, save the mesh report to share with the doctor as it may indicate the presence of some kind of pathology. Thank you, Jane. The doctor will go over the measurement results during your exam in preparation for calculating your eye scription. We will now demonstrate some common patient situations that can lead to a poor measurement. Often, a patient's head will not make contact with the headrest. This could result in an inaccurate measurement. If the patient has their eyelid partially closed, this could result in a poor mesh overlay where a large amount of data is missing. Make sure you keep your eyes open nice and wide. Remember to blink if you need to, but keep your eyes open wide after blinking. If the patient has an unstable tear film, the mesh overlay could have many missing data points. Remind the patient to blink before and during the measurements. Blink a few times for me. Be sure to keep blinking if you need to during the measurement. If the patient does not look at the proper target, they could accommodate during measurement. This can be seen during measurement by the pupils constricting or identified after measurement by comparing the autorefraction to the existing prescription. If the autorefraction is significantly more minus in sphere power, the patient likely accommodated Adjust your script to specifically tell the patient not to look at the red dot. Blink a few times and look at the stripes on the balloon. Ignore a red dot if you see it. Just keep looking at the stripes on the balloon. It will go in and out of focus, which is normal. Just continue looking at the stripes on the balloon and ignore anything else. Feel free to blink if you need to. Just keep your eyes open nice and wide. In patients with cataracts, it may be necessary to raise the sensitivity to ensure a good sensor image. When prompted with this message, adjust the sensitivity level only one step at a time. When proper care is taken to get a good measurement, the process is quick and easy. Good measurements are critical to getting good autorefraction values from the iProfiler Plus and providing accurate information for the doctor's exam.